Hello, everybody. Five and Five here, bringing you more Spy Party commentary. Uh, this time, our second game of three, our second pair of three games between Virafo and Kletos. Starting off with Virafo as the spy. And let's just go we're on Veranda here. If you missed the synopsis of Veranda, go check out the uh, part one of this two-part series. I think it'll be uh, Spy Party Commentary 4 on my YouTube channel. Uh, and Virafo and Kletos, both very, very highly experienced players. So we already saw some crazy wrong arm bugs and tricky maneuvers, some great bounces uh, off of the AIs. Uh, in the previous game, or set of games. So if you haven't uh, checked that out yet, go ahead and uh, give that a watch. And so we have right here Blondo. I think he's Blondo because he has the striped tie uh, and the blonde hair. Inspecting a couple statues, gets highlighted for it. Pretty normal stuff. Uh, and not really a ton else going on. And ag again, I'm going to say the tricky thing about this map is that it's so large with so many blind spots that it's easy to get away with things. So I'm going to go into spy cam and we have Blondo here who's just really been taking his time. Sees an opportunity to seduce the target. Walks in and immediately starts talking. Uh, pretty good flirt. 51% flirt there. Uh, which, you know, again, going into a conversation and talking immediately, a little bit risky. And then going straight to another set of statues. Now, he already got high lit. He doesn't know for sure that uh, he was high lit. Uh, but <laughs> I actually want to back up again there real quick. He doesn't know for sure that he's been high lit, but uh, most spies are pretty good at knowing when they've been tagged for something. Uh, now, you can see that there's a little bit of an abrupt motion here when he sets down the statue. Uh, this is something that new players can get tagged pretty easy on if they are being watched. Now this goes to the fact that a veranda is uh, just that it, there's so many blind spots. So you can see right now I'm going to go in free spy cam. There's no way that the sniper is going to see this. If you put down the statue when your spy is holding it above your head, you get that you know qu jerky uh, motion that like that. that. Just like that when you put the statue down. Uh, and I mean, I've been shot. I've been shot for that before. <laughs> so you always have to be careful. And now he's going straight over to uh, another set of statues. Again, ris really risky. Statue to statue to statue. The statue was swapped, and it was just not great timing. And he gets shot for it. So there you have it. That one was pretty quick. So uh, game one of our second three-game set goes to Kletos. Game two. Let's roll. Snaps is the spy. Uh, you can see here. Checking his watch. And that's something that you'll see happen very early. He gets a green time ad. So the sniper will see that the time is moving just a little bit slower when you get a green time ad. Uh, so that... Uh, <coughs> pardon me. When you get a green, green time ad, it's not an obvious change. When it's a white time ad, then you'll uh, actually see the timer change immediately. <laughs> Delay. Not a bad idea to just stop and put the briefcase down, because um, I, I want to go back and watch that. Uh, so we can watch the whole set of events unfold. So I think you got what I was saying in regards to the time ad as well. Uh, not a bad idea to do a time ad early because not a lot of uh, snipers are watching for it. There's so many things going on early that you have to uh, worry about memorizing statues, making sure you're keeping an eye on, an ambas on the ambassador since uh, bug rush is such a uh, common thing to do. And uh, so it's easy to get away with the time ad. Plus, uh, when you're doing five missions, sometimes you're starting to run out of time. So thinking ahead, just doing an early time ad. Now, Spy here snaps, decides to pick up the briefcase and deliver it to the ambassador. Always a nice way to blend in for uh, for a spy if you can manage to get the timings right, and it's something that takes practice. But something something goes wrong here, and the ambassador starts to walk away. And you never really know where the ambassador is going. In fact, I think what happens when an AI picks up the briefcase 
and is going to deliver it to the ambassador. The ambassador walks away. The AI will stop and then set down the briefcase, especially if the ambassador is busy, say, in the statues or at the statues. So that's good. Thinking on his feet, stopping, putting down the briefcase, and then continuing on to a new mission. So in the meantime, oh, there was a bug in Master that was completed. Where did that happen? Where did that happen? Did I already catch that? I did not catch that. Ah, right here. That is so weird. That was a wrong arm bug as well. And I missed it. How did he... Okay, so he must have started... See, in that situation, I almost think that it's a little bit more obvious. So if you start the bug, for example, like right... Uh, I want to get this right at the time mark here. So right when begin planting bug while walking hits, you can see that... He's the ambassador's kind of on the left hand side of Snaps here. So when Snaps goes to plant the bug, his left arm will go up. Now in this situation I don't think that that's necessarily the best case because uh, you'd probably want your hand and also a statue swap <laughs> right there. Uh, you probably want your hand uh, to be a little bit more obscured. Especially because the spy, uh, the sniper uh, laser was so far away. So if he's watching Sniper Laser, and this is something that's difficult to do for spies, you can see that he's watching for where Sniper Laser is. It can't be seen, so he starts the bug. So it's pretty safe. He could have done just a regular bug without trying to make it fancy, but to each their own. Also gets a statue swap there, so now two missions done. And I'm going to go back to where we were, which was a little ways forward. Because we talked about the briefcase movement and now Snaps is here in this conversation circle uh, and getting a flirt off 49% flirt so not a, not a fantastic flirt but not bad now going over to inspect more statues if he inspects both of these statues then he's done with statues never has to go back and it's good timing for that too because the, the uh, sniper laser is on the other side in fact, you can't even see that Snaps is at the statues again. So, uh, good timing. Snaps emerges, and he is done inspecting statues. So now he just needs to finish Seduce. Uh, curiously stands right next to the Ambassador, something that people typically don't want to do, after, especially after they've completed a bug. I understand since the, the Seduction target's also right there, but still a little bit risky. <laughs> Uh, has Seduce up to 96%, so that's really frustrating. Pulls off a green purloin, so now I don't know if the sniper is going to see it right away. Toby meandering around, and it looks like the drink is going to go off to Brown Dress. And does the sniper notice? Sniper doesn't... Now just notices. And... Uh, well, it looks like he wants to shoot Snaps. <laughs> Snaps just needs to... Oh, that was kind of an awkward bounce, too. So we're going to watch Snaps ricochet off of uh, Yellow Coat. Just kind of spin around a little bit there. And strangely... Oh, he's going back to finish his flirt. And still picking up a statue at the same time, which is uh, a blending in tactic. Oh, the seduction target left. That's really unfortunate. That was a pretty decent bounce as well, but I want to watch it one more time from the uh, from the sniper point of view. Wow, that was really good. And the thing that d differentiates a, a, a good bounce from a bad bounce is if your character continues to rotate while they while they ricochet off of another AI. Just watch these guys over here, uh, yellow jacket and <laughs> plaid dress. <laughs> watch these two over here. Boom, they're, they're both kind of rotating, rotating, rotating until they find the right way to go, and there you go. So Snaps over here again inspecting statues. This is just, it's the riskiest place for him to be, and I know he's just trying to follow Seduction Target, 
but why not go to the window? He's been to statues four times. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It just seems very, very risky. So now he's going to follow Seduction Target around. Seduction Target finds a really strange, awkward path into that conversation circle again next to the Ambassador. Snap says, oh, hell yeah I am. I'm going in there. Even though it takes this weird, loopy, roundabout path. Watch this weird, loopy, roundabout path. <laughs> I think an AI would have probably just walked straight through Toby's tray. Uh, but he does pull off the seduce, and it looks like time is about to run out here. And, and again, the, uh, the sniper doesn't know it, and is probably not going to take a shot. So, <laughs> there you go. I think I end every game on, so there you go. Kletos nails that one. Uh, so now Kletos on a roll to the first games here. We're going to go into game three... Virifo is the spy as Bondo. How appropriate. <laughs> so first thing uh, Bondo's doing is actually pulling off a purloin. Has successfully pulled that off and then followed up by a quick bug. So this was a, uh, a green purloin. As you can see, purloin guest list is flashing there. He's moving in for the bug. He's going to start the bug and then actually turn around so that his arm, when it flails out like that, is facing towards the inside of the building. Now, as you can see, the sniper laser is actually coming out straight here. So purely from an AI pathing standpoint, there isn't a lot of reason as to why an AI would be in this exact spot, not quite on statues and not quite on bookshelf. So that may look a little bit suspicious as the spy comes around the corner here. Uh, but he doesn't see the arm flail, so it looks like Bondo might get away with it. Immediately going over to statues, uh, not getting high lit yet for that. So it looks like uh, Bondo might be in a strong position right now. A little bit of bump and uglies between <laughs> uh, Ambassador and plaid jacket, but that now uh, Bondo does get high lit. I don't know if that's necessarily uh, I'm just pausing here to kind of think. Uh, I don't know if you would highlight someone for staying at the statues for maybe a little bit longer than a typical AI would. The AIs will, you know, they'll switch up how much time they spend at a statue. But when you get, for example, two white inspects in a row, it can be a very long time spent at the statues. Uh, so now we see just now uh, in the highlighted list, the guest list has been purloined by Ginger. And again, someone tell, please tell me his name. Please tell me his real name. I don't know if he's supposed to be Blue Jacket or if Striped Tie is supposed to be Blue Jacket. But anyway, guest list has been picked up by, uh, by Ginger there. And we can see coming up here in the list that Bondo is going to go for the statue swap. He was just in that cubby hole too. And this is kind of unfortunate timing because he did not get a green swap. So uh, I'm going to back that up super quick. And really what this means, and we can see the sniper is... So here comes the statue swap right here. And the sniper has come around this corner, and if he's doing his job properly inspecting the statues, he knows that ha that has swapped. That doesn't mean that necessarily Bondo has done it. It could have been a green swap before that, and it just happened to change his hands. But Bondo is in his sights now, and <laughs> that was not the most uh, that was not the most graceful of bumps. <laughs> Right there. That was a little bit, uh, a little bit grindy. So I would, uh, I would have some serious red flags raised about Bondo right now. So banana bread's about to go. It's going to be a fake banana bread. Banana bread. It's also a white banana bread too. So uh, he's going to be talking when it goes off. It's a pretty good time because only one suspected DA is not in a conversation circle. The other two are both in here. There's lots of other people in conversation circles. Uh, he's already low lit. 
Blue Dress is walking around, uh, and White Danger's at Statues. He's been at Statues for a little while. So there are only a couple of eliminations that can be made here. Uh, and if the, uh, if the sniper is going to assume that this is a fake banana bread, then really there's one option, which is Bondo. Yeah. And Bondo gets the shot. <laughs> so if there's one thing that Banana Bread does very well, it's <laughs> that it calls out a shot, or it brings out, baits out a shot. So if we look here at the uh, standings, uh, Virfo got shot, then... Uh, am I looking at the right side here? Virfo got shot, Kletos... So, okay, Kletos got game one, Kletos got game two, and then uh, Kletos shot the spy. So, Kletos took away all three games in the second part. Uh, and, well, there you go. That's, that's going to be it. So, it looks like Kletos... Uh, took the whole series of six here on Veranda. Uh, and I'm going to wrap it up right there. So please let me know how I'm doing, excited for that really awkward ending. <laughs> and if there's anything that I can do to improve, uh, taking my time a little bit more, watching more, uh, replaying uh, certain parts, or if that's annoying to you, let me know. Uh, I'm really trying to improve here because I really, I think this game has so much to it. And... Uh, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm having a lot of fun watching these uh, these pro players really uh, pull off some sweet moves, especially those wrong arm bugs. Those are <laughs> whether they're needed or not, <laughs> they're they're pretty cool to watch. So uh, leave me your feedback; we would really appreciate it. Also check out my Twitch, Twitch.tv/climate5, where I play Spy Party and more. Catch you all next time.